In this video, I'll teach you how to create a code-compliant wall bracing plan in accordance with the International Residential Code, or IRC. The general process can also apply to some regional building codes, because most of them are based on the IRC. I'm going to demonstrate how to manually do the calculations using the IRC tables, and I'll show the same process using the IRC wall bracing calculator. Before we start, know that the wall bracing section of the IRC is gigantic. This video is not going to cover every detail. I'm going to focus on the process, which is by far the most important part and should be enough to get started. My objective is to draw up a wall bracing plan that is code compliant, like this. I will know the plan is code compliant when the calculations show three things. Wind strength greater than 100%, seismic strength greater than 100% if seismic is applicable, and zero miscellaneous non-compliances. IRC wall bracing calculations depend on three key criteria. Building characteristics is simple, so let's start there. Wall bracing is done by the story. I'm going to work on story one, the bottom story, of a two-story home. These building characteristics will influence wall bracing calculations, but not just yet. The next topic is braced wall panels. The term braced wall panel is basically a sheer wall. Here is the IRC's definition. There are two key elements here. One, it is a full height section of wall. Two, its length must meet certain requirements. Let's take a quick look at the different bracing methods. There are 16 bracing methods. In terms of strength, they follow a hierarchy as shown here. Methods on the left are the weakest, and those on the right are strongest. The 16 bracing methods are broken down into two general categories, intermittent and continuously sheathed. In terms of calculations, they function the same. The difference is in their construction. Continuously sheathed methods require that everything along the line is sheathed too, like narrow sections and the areas above and below windows and doors. Remember, there are two key requirements to be considered a braced wall panel, full height and minimum length. Let's look at how minimum length is determined. The length requirements are found in this table, plus a similar partial credit table. In this tutorial, I will mostly use bracing method CSWSP, which stands for Continuously Sheathed Wood Structural Panel. And for this method, the length requirement depends on two properties, wall height and adjacent opening height. Let's do an example. This wall has a height of nine feet measured from floor to ceiling. The wall has one adjacent opening with a height of five feet, that's 60 inches. Looking at the table, it must be at least 27 inches in length to qualify as wall bracing. Its length is 16.5 inches, so it doesn't qualify. When I toggle on invalid panels, this wall panel flashes, indicating it is invalid. When I right-click, a message tells me why. Let's do an example that passes. This wall has two adjacent openings, a window and a sliding door. Code requires using the larger opening, so I'm giving this an opening height of 80 inches for the door. This wall panel must be at least 30 inches in length to qualify, and it has a length of 6 feet 3 inches, so it does. When I toggle on invalid panels, this wall panel does not flash, and no message is displayed when I right-click. Depending on the bracing method, certain options are available. For method CSWSP, I can remove interior gypsum, and I can omit horizontal blocking. If I assign these options, the amount of required bracing will later be amplified with an adjustment factor. I will come back to this feature later when I include the garage. That's braced wall panels in a nutshell. Now I'm going to cover braced wall lines. The term braced wall line basically means a row of braced wall panels. Here is IRC's definition. It's pretty brief and not very helpful. This figure explains the concept better. There are a few things to point out. Braced wall lines are 90 degrees to one another, usually horizontal and vertical. Braced wall lines often overlap braced wall panels, but they don't have to. 
Braced wall lines must intersect one another at least twice. This denotes where they begin and end. Braced wall lines include any braced wall panels within four feet on either side. Because shear forces acting on upper floors transfer down to lower floors, it is best when braced wall lines on upper floors have braced wall lines directly beneath them, but this is not a requirement. Wall line spacing is significant for wind analysis. Wall line length is significant for seismic analysis. There are a few requirements about the braced wall panels within a braced wall line. They must be within 10 feet from each end, and they must be within 20 feet from each other, measured end to end. A rule that went into effect in 2021 is visible here. This braced wall line would not be permitted because all of its braced wall panels are offset to one side. This was taking advantage of the rule where braced wall panels could be offset up to four feet, but it went against the intent of that rule. Under the 2021 code, this braced wall line should be located here. And last, there are end requirements when using one of the continuously sheathed bracing methods. For this house, I will use this button to automatically place my braced wall lines. And now that I have braced wall panels and braced wall lines, I can do bracing calculations. Wind calculations depend on braced wall line spacing. It works like this. When wind pushes against this side of the house, these wall lines must resist the force. Wall lines spaced further apart capture more wind and therefore require more bracing. I'll use this wall line as an example. This is the wind bracing requirement table. It takes four inputs, the wind speed, story, wall line spacing, and bracing method. The spacing for this wall line is exactly 53.5 feet, which is between 50 and 60 feet. So the bracing requirement is between 13 and 15.5 feet. When interpolated, about 13.9 feet of bracing is needed. Now 13.9 feet of bracing is the baseline value. It needs to be adjusted by a few factors. A factor of 1.3 applies because my building is in exposure category C. The roof height is 14 feet, which interpolates to an adjustment factor of 1.12. The story height is 11 feet, which has an adjustment factor of 1.05. There are two vertical braced wall lines, so this adjustment factor is one, and none of the other options apply, so their adjustments are also one. The baseline length is multiplied by all adjustments, resulting in a total requirement of 21.1 feet. The last step is to compare the required bracing for this braced wall line with its braced wall panels. This table that was referenced previously says CSWSP wall panels contribute their actual length. Not counting invalid panels, I have 25 feet of bracing assigned to this braced wall line. 25 feet divided by 21.1 feet is a wind resistance of 118%, so it has sufficient bracing. I must also check that there aren't any miscellaneous non-compliances, such as a panel spacing issue. There are none, so this braced wall line is code compliant. The process is then repeated for each braced wall line. That covers wind bracing calculations. The process for seismic bracing is nearly identical. The key difference is that the length of braced wall line is used instead of spacing. Spacing is still relevant, but it is incorporated as an adjustment factor. Now that we've covered the basics, you can see that manual calculations take a lot of time so I'm just going to use the calculator from now on. Next, I'll go over some common wall bracing complications and give a few tips for expert use. Here's what's different about the floor plan. I've added the garage, and that has changed the layout of braced wall lines. The garage is mostly sheathed with CSWSP, but the opening is sheathed with the stronger method CSPF. I will later find out I can substitute one of the CSPF panels which benefits the builder. I will also find out I can omit gypsum and horizontal blocking from one of the garage walls, 
and that I need to include bracing from an interior wall. The first discussion topic is braced wall line spacing for irregular shapes like this. The spacing for the left wall line is simply this dimension, and the spacing for the middle wall line is this dimension. But the spacing for the right wall line is not so simple. It uses the weighted average of these two dimensions, which turns out to be 42 feet in this case. Now, I'm working on the bottom floor of a two-story building, and that means this floor requires more bracing than the top floor. But this garage is actually one story, particularly the top wall line. So I will right-click and treat it as a top story. Now it requires less wall bracing. I'm going to run an analysis now to check for compliance. Everything passes except for the left vertical wall line. When the building was a simple rectangle, it passed. But when I added the middle wall line, another adjustment factor was applied. I could resolve this one of two ways. Increase the bracing or decrease the spacing. I can't really increase the bracing, so I'll decrease the spacing by using this interior wall. To do that, I extend the middle braced wall line so it intersects with the bottom. Then I apply method GB, which is gypsum board, to this interior wall. And now when I run the analysis, everything passes. Note that the middle braced wall line features two methods, CSWSP and GB. When mixing methods, the weakest method is used for calculations. So this wall line now specifies method GB. I could submit this plan as is, but instead I'm going to try some things that could help the builder. This wall line is an exterior wall of the garage, so maybe I can omit gypsum. While I'm here, I will also omit horizontal blocking. That way the builder, if they want to, could use smaller pieces of sheathing to create a nine foot wall and they wouldn't have to block the joints. Note that I have only added options to one of two braced wall panels because the worst case scenario gets applied to the entire wall line. When I click analysis, the wall line is still code compliant. So now, for the sake of clarity, I'm going to specify the same options to the other wall panel. Next, I will check if these CSPF wall panels on the right wall line are necessary because they take much more time to build than other methods. I'll change one wall panel to CSWSP, then run analysis again. The wall line passes. I'll change the other wall panel too. Analysis doesn't pass, so I change it back. The last thing to point out is that some of my wall lines have a resistance of more than 200% which is overkill. But because I'm using a continuously sheathed method, I must sheathe the entire wall line. Instead, I could easily change the bracing method. Lead in bracing would even work in this case. There's a lot of potential for optimization when using the calculator. Now I'm finished with this wall bracing plan. So I go to File, Report View, and print a copy. The report includes the plan, calculations, construction details, and more. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and good luck!